Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Rocky Mountain Rankings. I am your host, Davies Tallow, and today we'll be ranking a band that uh, was very dear to my heart. Not, I wouldn't say the ultimate heavy metal band in my sights, but they have a very special spot. Uh, Started out in 1979 at Astro World in Florida by John and Chris Oliva. Of course, I'm talking about Sabotage, if you haven't already guessed. Before we get started, please subscribe, like the video, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment down below and leave your own ranking of Sabotage. I'd love to see it. So anyway, let's get into this. I said Sabotage is holds a very special place in my heart. Uh, 12 albums. I'm including D the Dungeons of Calling in this. So, just to let you know. Uh, you know, even though it's an EP, I'm going to include it in here. Uh, but anyway, started out number 12. What's largely regarded as their worst album ever. And it is bad, though it, I've heard a lot worse. <laughs> of course, talking about Fight for the Rock. Though, with this album and all the uh, discography of Subtitles, there's not one bad album cover. They're all fantastic. They all convey what the album is and this one is you know excellent in fact uh, there's the band right there hang on a second there is a hair that's waving there we go we got it <laughs> hair that's waving in my mic every time I look down I, I see it but anyway this uh, it starts out with the title song "Fight for the Rock," which is okay. Uh, not a bad song, but it could have been so much more. Out on the streets, a remake of a song that from their first album, "Sirens." Why they decided to do that? Maybe maybe they thought it it fit in here. You know, this is their attempt. I'm sure Atlantic Records is putting pressure on them to make radio-friendly tunes, and, well, Sabotage does not, as far as I'm concerned, make radio-friendly tunes, even though there are a number of songs that were played on the radio. They weren't overly played, thank heaven. But Out on the Streets, both songs, I do not care for either one. Uh, the one on Sirens is horrible. This one is not horrible, it's bad. Uh, Crying for Loves, you know, no. Uh, day After Day, yeah. Edge of Midnight's okay. Now, Hide, I love. You know, it's like you have this mountain of coal, and you're looking at it, and you're like, oh, go. It's black you know, black pile there, and then all of a sudden you look and you see this shiny thing, this diamond sparkling. That's hide. It's the diamond the rough here. It's excellent. I mean, it's what this album could have been, should have been. Uh, Lady in Disguise, uh, She's Only Rock and Roll, another attempt to, you know, what sounds like a failed attempt as a pop song. Wishing well, uh, you know that day after day after day. Let's see, you know day after day. Yeah, day after day. Bad finger cover. Wishing well, free cover. Then it ends with red light paradise. Is you know all right, but now, on all, it's not a horrible album. I can't listen to it, but I have to be. Excuse me. Something my eye. I had to be in a certain mood. But anyway, yeah. 
I can see why people don't like this album. But as with all bands, I have to have all the albums, even even the ones I don't like. But I will listen to this, especially especially Hyde. Like I said, fantastic. If you haven't heard Hyde, check it out. So that's number starting off number twelve. Now this album is the very first sabotage album I ever heard. Released May 20th, 1985 on what was it, Atlantic Records, their first album on Atlantic Records. Uh, of course, I'm sure a lot of people say, well, see, they sold out. But produced by Max Norman, talking about Power of the Night. Another fantastic album cover. Love it. And I remember the first, the, where I first heard this album, we were down swimming at the river bottoms, just south of here, having a fun day, fun summer day in the river. Friend come, hey, come and check this album out. He had this and Venom. I think, uh, I can't remember what album of Venoms it was. Uh, Venom, I did not like. And to this day, I will not listen to Venom. I do not like Venom. I will never listen to him. I'm sorry. That's just the way I feel about it. I know there's a lot of people who say, well, Davies, you got to give him a chance. I gave him a chance that day. And I told my friend, turn it off. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but anyway, he put this album on. And of course, it starts out with that, you know, these strange, weird sounds were like, what is this? Wow. What is, what's going to happen here? And then, you know, I was into Power of the Night. And then, back then when I was younger, it was okay. All the songs on here were okay. Now, Power of the Night, it starts out up here and then just sinks. Uh, though it has some shiny moments. Unusual, no. Yeah, highly unusual. Warriors, great. Necrophilia, no. Washed out, keywords here. Washed out. You know, I, you know, it's a hard driving tune, but I just I can't get into it. Uh, hard for love, no. Fountain of Use, good. Skull Sessions, good. Then it kind of fades. Stuck, stuck on you, and in the dream, John trying to do a a ballad doesn't work. Uh, well, no, you know, there's some good points here and there. You know, Power of the Night, Warriors, Fountain of Youth, Skull Session. But it, it could have been so much more. But it, it, you know, this will definitely still hold a special place in my heart for being my introduction to Sabotage all those years ago. Down the fact it was, uh, they'd released it that May. Yeah, May 20th, 1985. And I think it was like June or July when I when I heard it. So it wasn't long after it was it was released. So in those days, I miss them. Being down at the river with my friends, swimming, having fun, drinking beer, even though we shouldn't have been drinking beer. <laughs> so anyway, that's my number 11, Power of the Night. Move on to number 10. Okay. This album, when it came out, I was, look, I was expecting so much more, and I was disappointed. No, it's got some good points. Um, released March 13th, 2001. Very last album by Sabotage. Everybody hopes they'll, you know, they'll get back together. They did. Did a little tour, but nothing serious. Of course, I'm talking about Poets and Mad Men. When I got this, I was so stoked. After Wake Magellan, I thought, God, what's, what's going to happen here? And what do I find? John back on vocals. Now, don't get me wrong. I like John's vocals. Uh, I'm like, but I'm like, what happened to Zach? What happened to Zach Stevens? Why did he leave? 
uh, I haven't delved into the whys and hows and stuff. But he left. Of course, this is another concept album. And it seems like uh, in this time, you know, later period, Sabotage was stuck in concept album alley. Uh, Paul O'Neill and John Oliva was, you know, this is the course they set and they weren't going to depart from it. Um, could have been maybe because of uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, which was being way more successful than Sabotage at the time. But anyway, it starts out with uh, Stay With Me A While, Haunting. Uh, it was there in the silence. Is okay. Kamazar, Diamond and Rough. Right there. Love it. I Seek Power is all right. Drive. Uh, Morphine Child. Love it. Uh, then it goes down. Rumors, all right. Uh, Man in the Mirror. That kind of sinks. Uh, Shotgun is, though it, they have a bonus track with Zach on vocals. Shotgun Innocence. Fantastic. Um, like I said, I was expecting so much more from this album and it just sank. Uh, the only thing keeping this from the bottom is uh, the previous two albums. <laughs> Though I do, like, I do enjoy listening to this uh, way more than the other two, but it could have been so much more. So much more. So anyway. That's the number 10, Poets of Mad Men. Okay, this one, oddly enough, is not a concept album. Uh, this is the last album they did before they got stuck in the concept album rut. But, you know, don't get me wrong, I love concept albums. It's just, they were doing too many. You know, you know, especially when you have two great concept albums and you end end everything with a bad, you know, well, not a bad, but a mediocre concept album. You know, but anyway. Uh, released August 16th, 1994. Handful of Ring. Um, decent album. Uh, the first album without... Chris Oliva on guitar. You know, the band was basically trying to decide what they were going to do here. John wanted to continue on with the band, you know, have the band continue on. Uh, especially to honor Chris. Uh, the problem, though, with that is you get getting this honor rut and you can't really do that. You know, Chris, you know, I'm sure he was just devastated by the loss of his brother, his bandmate, you know, as I'm sure the rest of the band was, but you got to move on. You can't uh, continue to grieve forever. So anyway, this is an excellent album. Uh, the only thing that's keeping it from higher, being higher is the, what's to come. Uh, starts out with uh, Taunting Cobras. Fantastic. I love it. Handful of Rain. Uh, the radio. We played that on the radio. That's when I knew this album was out. I heard that. I'm like, great. Fantastic. Gotta, gotta get this. Chance. Fantastic. Stare into the Sun's all right. Uh, Castle's Burning's all right. Visions. Intermental. All right. Watching You Fall's good. Uh, nothing's go nothing going on. Fantastic, love it. Symmetry, fantastic. Alone you breathe. You know, a good, solid, non-concept album. Um, this is the uh, sabotage that should have kept going. Though the concept albums that were to follow, I can see, you know, the reasoning behind them and they're and they're great so but after those two they should have 
went back to this kind of chemistry. Uh, let the concept album monster kind of relax and take a break for a while. But, you know, and they keep saying that uh, they're thinking about making a comeback, but I don't see it happening. I'll, I'll be pleasantly surprised if they do. But anyway, there's the band on the back. Um, that, who played on this? Uh, Zach Stevens, Alex Skolnick, Skolnick Johnny Lee Middleton, and Steve Rockholtz. Though I believe, I don't think Steve played drums on this. I keep hearing stories where he didn't. Uh, what does it say here? Anyway, that's my number nine right there. Handful of rain. Check it out. It's great. Okay. Move on to number eight. Now, this album right here was what really, really got me into Sabotage. Uh, between 1985 and 1993, I kind of lost touch with them. I remember the album, you know, or uh, Power of the Night. You know, like I said, very special time. Uh, but I moved on to other things, you know. And so when I heard one of the songs off this album, I'm like, wow, this is Sabotage. I, I got to go check these guys out again. So anyway, released April 6th, 1993. Talking about Edge of Thorns. Uh, and Edge of Thorns is the song that got me back into it. I love it. Love that song. Uh, last one with Chris on guitar. You got Zach on Zach's debut with the band. Johnny Lee Milton and uh, Steve Walkoats. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. If I'm not, apologies. Uh, John did keyboards and piano, though he was keeping it uh, kind of a low profile. He wanted to, uh, I guess, he wanted the band to be more friendly, radio friendly. He wanted you know succeed, and I guess he, his vocals weren't going weren't the style that was going to do it. So I do I do love John C singing. He you know he added a rough edge. And this is the only album. Well, this and Handful of Rain are the only two albums that he does not sing a word on. Uh, like I said, it starts out with Edge of Thorns, Carves of Stones, fantastic, Lights Out, great, Scraggy Tomb, love it. Uh, Labyrinth, instrumental, follow, uh, great. Follow Me, Exit Music, Degrees of Sanity, Fantastic, Conversation of Peace, All Right, All That I Bleed, Love, you know, probably my all-time favorite from this album, All That I Bleed. Damien, dun, 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 dun. Love It, Miles Away is Great, and then Sleep, Love it way it, I Love the Way It Ends with that acoustic song. But all in all, it's a great song, a great album. Definitely check it out. You know, uh, I said they were trying to move into more radio friendly areas, and they succeeded here where they failed with uh, "Fight for the Rock." This is what you know. You could say "Fight for the Rock" should have been. There's the band. So anyway, that's number eight. Edge of Thorns. And number seven. Now, I remember when I first heard about this album, I like it kind of the, the title kind of threw me off. Uh, I didn't know what to think about it, but when I heard the song, the title song, I thought, okay, it works. <laughs> Released December first, nineteen eighty nine. About gutter ballet. And like I said, you know, all these album covers are just fantastic. I mean. 
all of them. They convey what, what the album's about, you know, this one. This one, you know, is great. It's not my favorite, but still, it's, it's not a stinker whatsoever. Sabotage knew how to pick album covers. This one uh, starts out great. I love the way uh, it starts off the drums and the bass on the of Raging War. Just great. And goes into the title song, Gutter Ballet. You know, don't let the titles of the song throw you. It's hard, heavy, fantastic. Uh, tempt temptation Revelation. A uh, little ballad there. Uh, when the crowds are gone. Love it. Fantastic. You know, John singing his heart out. Just, you know, getting the energy, the vibe of that whole, that song just going. Uh, goes, then goes at Silk and Steel, another instru uh, instrumental. Uh, she's in love. Not a big fan. Uh, they could have cut that one out. Hound's great. Unholy. Good. Mentally yours. Oh, it's all right. Not a big fan, but it's still decent. Summer Rain is okay. Thorazine Shovel, great. I mean, uh, in fact, I think, sorry, was it Thorazine Shovel? Bonus, yeah, Thorazine Shovel is actually a bonus track. Though they include it in the regular. But anyway, Sabotage coming into their own right here. Uh, but you got John on vocals, Chris on guitar, Johnny, Lee, Middleton, and Steve. You know, Chris Caffrey. He's never played. He, he never played on this album, but he's credited with guitars and keyboards, and is pictured on the album. In fact, I think they, you know, they do have. Here's a picture of the band in here. Right out loud. I hope they did. Oh, there's okay. There's John. And the thing about it, John, quite thin there. He's a he's quite big man now. <laughs> and I'm appearing for his health. I mean, he's way over way overweight. And I would like to see him lose some weight and you know get healthy again. I believe he has diabetes. I'm not 100 percent sure. I hope I'm wrong on that. Anyway, there's Chris and Steve. And I'll tell you, Steve right here, he has, he's usually has a beard, but uh, he shaved it off and he looks strange with that. Uh, there's Johnny and the and Chris, who like it says, does not play anything, any notes whatsoever on this album. But he was, did play on the supporting tour. So anyway, definitely check it out. Fantastic album. Okay, moving on to number six. Okay. Now we're in two... The period where things started happening. A man by the name of Paul O'Neill, who I've mentioned previously, enters the picture, enters to Chris and John's life, and sabotage would never be the same with Paul. Paul is a brilliant, eccentric. Because that's my view. But he knew how to do things, but at the same time, there are things that he did, especially with Trans Siberian Orchestra, that I just don't understand. Uh, one of those things is, is, and this is only with tra Trans Siberian Orchestra, his use of songs, you know, over and over again. 
you know, if you listen to Trans Siberian Orchestra, there are certain songs that have a recycled melody or guitar licks, you know, stuff, stuff like that. It just bugs me. That's the only thing that, about Trans Siberian Orchestra that bugs me is his reuse of things, of themes, and so on. And there, it got it's. There are times when I'll be listen. I'll be listening to one of those albums. And I said, "Come on, Paul. Do something different. Get out of this. Do something different." <laughs> uh, he ultimately did. You know, he, he was in the Christmas theme for what three albums. Uh, he ultimately did with uh, uh, Night Castle, which is a good album, but. Again, there's certain things that he rehashed from previous the previous albums. So, but luckily he he didn't do that with Sabotage. Uh, he helped Sabotage greatly. He helped to prove their music, uh, helped them steer them in a, a more of a progressive heavy metal area. So, anyway, released September twenty eighth, nineteen eighty seven, produced by. Paul O'Neill and Erratic, Erratic, Erratic Records. All of the Mountain King. Fantastic album. I mean, this, the more I listen to this, the more it grows on me. Uh, starts out with 24 Hours Ago. Great. Beyond the Doors of the Dark. I mean, it's, uh, Paul taking Sabotage back to the roots. On all the, a lot of these songs here, you can hear their earlier stuff, you know, their earlier sound. You know, back, especially on Beyond the Doors of the Dark, Legions, you know, there, Strange Wings. Uh, now, Strange Wings, the title, that's another thing that he, he Paul did. He, he used titles too. Uh, no, I take that back. He changed it to different wings. Sorry, I take that back. Change it to different wings. But it's still <laughs> kind of a reuse. Uh, Prelude to Madness. Fantastic. Paul the Mountain King. Awesome. You know, that way Prelude to Madness goes right into Hall of Mountain King. It's fantastic. Uh, Price She Pays, uh, one of the weaker songs. White Witch, another weak song. But a uh, hark back to their earlier stuff. Last Dawn. Great devastation, fantastic. You know, again, they're getting back with this album, they're getting back to their roots. They're getting back to where they should have been with Power of the Night and Fight for the Rock. And Paul was instrumental of you know taking John and Chris and say, Hey, this is where you want to go. Uh, where, there's the band. Kind of a Reminiscence of uh, Come Taste the Band by Deep Purple. <laughs> I, don't think, I think that's the only pictures of the band. So anyway, definitely check this out. Fantastic. Okay, moving right along. Okay, we're back to the, we're right to the beginning. Uh, three years after... Well, actually, four years that they started out at Astro World. At least April 11th, 1983, on Music of Nations label, produced by Danny Johnson, talking about sirens. Now, oddly, I didn't know that I thought this is the only co album cover they had. This one, I love. That is an awesome album cover. The one that it was originally released with was a shows a a blue field with a ship coming like through a blue fog. Uh, it's okay, but I in the sabotage uh, logo is different on there. Totally different. This this is you know this, the logo on here. You know, is this what you'll see with 
all throughout the whole discography of uh, Sabotage is that logo, which I just love. It's hard edged, it's savage, you know, you know, sabotage. Uh, I remember when I first heard this, I didn't know what to make of it. I mean, it's just raw, hard hitting. You know, the band, you know, the raw uh, starts up with sirens and goes to the Holocaust. You know, fantastic. I believe. Great. Rage. Fantastic. On the run. Uh, of course, it starts getting a little weak here in the later part of the album. Uh, Twisted Little Sisters, all right. Living it for the night. Scream Murder, all right. Ends on a dud. The worst attempt at a kind of a ballad thing out on the streets. Uh, I'm sorry, but it's awful. This one's got some uh, couple of bonus tracks on it. Lady in Disguise was great, and The Message, all right. A couple of demos. Uh, this is, you know, released, uh, when, you know, there's Chris on the back. Of course, he passed away in 93, you know, due to a drunk driver. Uh, please don't drink and drive, or stuff like this will happen. You know, we'll lose great people. Of course, all people are great, you know, don't get me wrong. When I say great people, I mean everybody. I mean, you go out and drink, you may kill the next person who's going to be a great president or who's going to discover a great potentially discover a, an antidote to something, you know, maybe there's a big C. <laughs> so anyway, there, there, there's the back. Just fantastic album cover. Love it. And like I said, it's the band at the rawest on this. You know, the way sabotage is meant to be. <laughs> so, Anyway, that's number five in the top five at five. Okay. This album, at least October 4th, 1991, produced by, of course, Paul O'Neill. Their first delve into concept. And they do a fantastic job at it here. I'm going to talk about streets. Uh, was supposed to be a double album, but the, of course the power of B said no. Sorry, we're not gonna let you do a double album. You know like, why? Why not? They got a lot. Of, I want to know what else what was left off this album. You know. Uh, they, oh, oh, here it is right here. Uh, outtakes. The album really do to be double out double CD. Uh, but late in the recording process, Sabotage decided to compress the story on, into one album. Uh, I'm sure the Atlantic has a lot to do with that. Uh, Larry's Elbows, Beyond Broadway, Up For You, Life Goes On, Stay, <coughs> you mean Desiree, Tonight I Would Be King, Islands of, Island of the Kings, and Sanctuary. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, voice gets dry when I talk too much. Am I talking too much? <laughs> uh, would have been. I, I, I would love, love it if they would re-release this. You know, with those songs as a double CD. I would definitely buy it. But anyway, it's it's still classic the way it is. Uh, let's see here. They got two the original CD. And what's the difference? Anyway, uh, starts out with Streets. It's haunting, you know, fantastic opener. And then goes to Jesus Says. Uh, it was also had to have, supposed to have comment, uh, commentary on here. Uh, John narrating a story. So that was also what was left off. And from what I understand, Atlantic 
and Beatley Lasso Tapes. That's the commentary. Uh, tonight, he grins again. It's fantastic. Strange reality. Great. A little too far. Uh, you're alive. Sign me a text. I mean, this whole the whole story just flows. Uh, St. Patrick's. Uh, can you hear me now? New York City don't mean nothing. Ghost in the Ruins. Awesome. Uh, if I go away, great. Agony and ecstasy is great. Kill my soul. Love it. Uh, somewhere in time is great. And then ends with believe. Love it. I mean, I would just love to hear the, everything that was taken out of this and the, the commentary. You know, maybe someday we will. But right now, it's a great concept album. You know, not the best, but still. You know, it's great. You know, And what's nice about this is these songs can be uh, presented on their own. So it's not like you would lose something if they were, like, say, stri or Streets and G Jesus Saves, you know, which is played a lot on their concert tours. Or was played a lot on the concert tours, you know. Or Strange Reality, you know, were played by themselves. They'd still it would still work. So anyway, that's number yeah, number four. Great. Okay, coming to number three. Another concept album. You know, this one I think is just as fantastic as Streets, but I think it's a little bit better. Least September fifteenth, nineteen ninety seven. Uh, of course, produced by Paul O'Neill and John Olivia. Wake of Magellan. I couldn't put this album away. I just fell in love with it. I mean, it was just fantastic. Got what I consider, you know, a class, the classical period of this band lineup. You know, Zach Stevens, John, Olivia, uh, Chris Caffrey, Al Petrelli, Johnny Lee Milton, Jeff Plate. I mean, just, you know, Paul doing the producing is just fantastic. You love concept albums, you know. This is this is the one, you know. This is stuff for you, you know. There they are. Starts out with the ocean, you know. Kind of, you know, hear the ocean waves, and then this music fades in. And then goes the welcome, fantastic, and. Uh, and you know, turns to me, you know, just starts out with this Zach calmly singing and boom. Dun, 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 dun. It's just fantastic. Turns to me. Uh, morning sun, you know, kind of a little ditty, uh, you know, it kind of makes you picture Zach on a boat singing. <laughs> Singing the song, you know, at least for me, that's what happens. You know, uh, this is another way. Uh, John singing on that one, uh, adding his you know special vocals. Black Jack Guillotine, I played on the radio. Love it. Kind of a you know Zach doing a kind of a rap heavy metal song. Uh, Paragons of uh, Paragons of Innocence. John returning on vocals. Uh, Quite the system. Great. Uh, Undature. Mr. Metal, fantastic. Wake of the Magellan, great. Anymore, love it. S the Storm, another instrumental. Love that instrumental. I mean, it's just pounding. And, you know, you hear the storm, you know, thunder and light, you know, you can picture the lightning. Then it ends with the hourglass. Uh, 
front to back, fantastic album. Um, you know, of course, why this didn't make number one? Well, you'll see why this wasn't higher. You know, but you know, number three, that is high for this. Definitely check it out. Sabotage at their greatest. You know, just too bad they uh, did stick with this lineup. And went on, you know, you know, just kept, you know, left the concept album, you know, cool, you know, let it cool for a while and go on to something different. I think if they'd done that, Sabotage would still be around today. So. Okay, moving on to number two, top two. Okay, this album was going to be a lot lower, but... When I, when I started recording this, I had to redo everything because I, when I went into it, I'm like, why am I putting this so low? This, this album is fantastic. So I went back, revamped, you know, started again and uh, put this up where it is now. Released October 24th, 1995. They're uh, entering their concept album period. Their heavy concept album, period. About Dead Winter Dead. Front the front the back. Fantastic. Starts with Overture. Great. Sarajevo. On him. In the town of Sarajevo, there's an old medieval square. You know, it's just awesome. And it goes into, this is the time. This is the time. And this is the place. And these are the signs that we must embrace. You know, talking about how, you know, this was done in a period where Yugoslavia was, it broke up. Uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina was, you know, split conflict with Serbia all kinds were you know people were dying you know nobody knew what exactly what was going on and I think you know, I think John Oliva and Paul O'Neill I think they went over there and saw what was going on and it kind of inspired them to write this but basically you know it starts out with Sarajevo being in the bombed out state and then goes back to when Yugoslavia broke up and there was so much promise, so much hope for, you know, being free, you know. But we ultimately find out what was going to happen after uh, their leader, Tito, passed away. And that was, you know, he was the unifying force behind Slovenia and, and uh, Croatia and Bosnia and Serbia and Montenegro and all, you know, Kosovo and all. I mean, we ultimately saw what happened there. That these factions, you know, were who didn't like each other, you know, this came to the surface after he passed away. I mean, he was literally holding that country together with an iron hand. Uh, could have been done a different way, yeah. I'm sure it could have, but he kept the peace for a long period of time. Uh, you know, just, I am, you know, John returning to uh, vocal prominence on this after leaving for a while. Uh, Starlight, fantastic. Let me get up here where I can see the... We bring our own starlight. You know, fantastic. Zach, you know, it just, Zach's vocal, fan, you know, he does such a great job with sabotage. Uh, doesn't matter anyway. John again. Uh, is this? This isn't what we meant. Oh, give you chills. Mozart madness memory. Awesome. Uh, kind of a harking to what was it come up? Come with the. Uh, Trans Siberian Orchestra. Uh, Dead Winter Dead. 
you know, hard driving metal right there. One Child, my all time favorite for this album. Uh, Christmas Eve, Sarajevo, twelve twenty four. Uh, I remember when I heard that played on the radio. I'm like, cool. They got Sabotage. You know, that you know, great instrumental. And they said, oh, that's Trans Siberian Orchestra. I'm like, no, it isn't. That's Sarajevo, or that's uh, yeah, Sarajevo, Sabotage. But they use it on uh, uh, Trans Siberian Orchestra's first album. Because you know Christmas Eve, so anyway, so if you you're kind of kind of confused like I was confused, you know this is where it started out. That song, uh, not what you see ends the uh, album. Uh, it kind of that song is good, but it kind of leaves leaves you hanging. At least it did with me. Uh, I wanted more. Let's put it this way. I wanted more from this album. But, you know, all in all, front to back, another good, con great concept album. You know, this and, uh, and Wake of Jones, you know, just a good one-two punch. But like I said, they should have uh, put the concept album uh, on hold for a while after uh, Wicked Magellan. Uh, of course, you got Zach, John, L, Chris, Johnny, and Jeff on this. I mean, all producing. <sighs> it's just too bad it couldn't, la couldn't have lasted. But, you know, it is what it is. So, anyway, that's number two. Of course, you're kind of, you're probably, if you're a Sabotage fan, you're kind of wondering, well, what what other album is there? Well, coming right up. Now this one, I was I went years thinking that this is a regular sabotage album. Just recently I found out it was an EP. I'm including it here because I absolutely adore this album. I love it. And if you're a Sabotage fan, you know what it is. Shall I, shall I, wait, shall I let the cat out of the bag? Or... <laughs> Released March 22nd, 1984 on Combat Records. The Dungeons are calling. Every time I listen to this album, especially the title song, I just get chills. This, you know, it, <laughs> I love it. I mean, this is why, you know, when you go from this to uh, Power of the Night is why that period is so disappear disappointing. Starts out with the title song, The Dungeons Are Calling. And oddly enough, the, the song is not about what you think. It's about somebody being on drugs and coming off of it and, you know, that whole, you know, basically like it's, the dungeons are calling you. Uh, but just heart, you know, Chris, his guitar on that, that's just awesome. He's just hard, you know, at his best. I mean, I I think that's the Dungeons of Colin is the best song uh, Chris, you know, ever did on guitar. In fact, this whole album is. Uh, By the Grace of the Witch, another hard driving, you know, just awesome. Visions, fantastic. Midas Night, City Beneath the Surface and the Whip. Oh, just awesome. And you got... Uh, Two bonus tracks on here. Fighting for your love. Uh, okay, you know, they could have done without that one, but you know, still, good decent song. And Sirens Live. This album is just, you know, don't get me wrong. What you know, Dead with the Dead and 
Wake from a gentleman, fantastic. This one beats them out. You know, be, you know, even though it's an EP, I just love it. I mean, if you've if you've heard Dungeon or Calling, the, the, you know, even the, just the title track. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. You know, and I playing that song. You know, this whole album on my car stereo. It's just awesome. In fact, I might. I may just put it on my little flash drive here, and that's what I use on my car. I do have a CD player in my car, but it doesn't work all the time. <laughs> so anyway, that's my number one. The EP, Dungeons Are Calling. In fact, uh, a lot of these, you know, the songs from Sirens and Dungeons Are Calling were played for years before they were recorded. And I, I think these were supposed to be included on Sirens. It should, you know, you know could have... The saying here, you know, Dungeons & Dragons is a loosely based concept album. You know, I don't consider it a concept album. You know, it could be, maybe. But, you know, when you got songs like Midas Night, and City Beneath the Service, and Great, By the Grace of the Witch, Visions, God. And uh, players on this, Chris Oliva, Chris, uh, John Oliva, Chris Oliva, Keith Collins on bass, and Steve Walkouts. You know, I think John or not John Paul O'Neill must have uh, been familiar with this and uh, Sirens, and when he uh, took the Oliva brothers. Under his wing. And if I keep rubbing my arm, I got my first shingle shot, and this whole area right here is just aching. Every time I touch it, it was just tender. And I got to go back in July to get another one. My doctor talked me into it. I said, You know, you don't want to have shingles because they hurt so bad. I remember having chicken pox. And if shingles are worse than chicken pox, no, you, I don't want that. But this, oh, aches <laughs> so anyway there you have it sabotage I've worst the best do a little review go over, uh, back over it uh, getting tired time to go to bed uh, by the <laughs> oh the dungeons are calling good grief I was uh, called it by the grace of the witch, you know, and that and that album cover, you know, just like I said, none of these album covers suck. They're all fantastic, you know. Dead, but dead winter dead. They all fit the theme of the album too. Wake of the Magellan, fantastic album cover. Streets, you know, I don't know really have like the band on the album cover, but this right here it works. Uh, sirens. Um, Call it out, King. <laughs> oh, I'll get it out there. Better ballet. That was number seven. I guess I should what they say what they were. Uh, number eight, Edge of Thorns. Number nine. Handful of rain. Number 10. Oh, it's a madman. Number 12. Power of the night. Very first album I've ever heard. And number 12. Fight for the rock and roll. So there you have it. Honorable mentions here. Um. Ghost in the Ruins, a tribute to Chris Oliva. Oliva. Live out. Uh, definitely check this out. You got City Beneath the Surface, 24 Hours Ago, Legions, Strange Wings, Gutter Ballet, When the Crowds Are Gone, A Raging War, The Dungeons Are Calling, Sirens, Hounds, uh, 
all the Mountain King, you know. I'm glad they put this out. I'll definitely check that out. Uh, and Japan Live 94. Yeah. Great live album. Uh, ton, it starts with Tony Cobras, Edge of Thorns, Chance. They don't do the whole th song with Chance. It's kind of, you know, especially with the voices, different voices saying different things at one period, you know, kind of hard to copy your live. Uh, nothing going on. Love that one. Uh, Cars of Stone, Jesus Saves, uh, Watching You Fall, Castles Burning, All That I Bleed, love it. Handful of Rain, love it. Sirens and Gutter Belly. I mean, great, fantastic live album. Um, but yeah, there you go. Also made my own uh, sabotage compilation, but uh, I'm not going to show that. <laughs> so anyway, there you have it. Sabotage. Hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed uh, listening to these albums again, uh, especially uh, uh, Dead Winter Dead, Wake of Magellan, and Dungeon of Calling. I mean, and Hall of the Mountain King, you know, it's funny when you put something away for a while, you don't listen to it, you bring it back out, you know, how it, like, God, this is, this is fantastic, you know, this, this is better than, than I remember, you know, you know, especially like Hall of the Mountain King and Gutter Ballet. You know, I listened to that the other day, listened to the other day to get ready for this, and God, I'm like, wow. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, I enjoyed doing it, you know, or listening to these albums again and doing this. Though I did have a hard time. I always have a hard time uh, getting started with one of these videos. Like I said, I'm not a big major speaker. You know, if I was before a live crowd, I'd be losing it at the word dark glasses or something <laughs> to get through it. I don't do well before crowds. Uh, but anyway, please, uh, leave a comment down below, uh, you know, especially your own, uh, ranking. I'd love to see it and, uh, have a good week and we'll see you on the next one.